What's up, Cal gang? Welcome back to Statics. So we got this problem today. Our goal is to find the uh, horizontal and vertical components of the reactions at, uh, at A and C, basically, of this two-member frame. So it's got this curvy thing from B to C, and then it's got this flat line from A to B. So let's go ahead and find out what's happening at C and A. So I haven't finished this force body diagram yet. I just went ahead and drew what we know already. So we have a pin at A and C. So if we have a pin at A and C, that means that there's going to be two forces at each one of those. There's going to be X and Y components. So let's go ahead and draw that. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw them going this way. So it'll be, or so that's C of X. This will be C of Y. And A of X will go this way. Or A of X. And A of Y will go this way. So we don't know if that's the way they're pointing, but that's just how we can go ahead and represent it before we know it. And let's try to figure it out. So the first thing we can do is we can take a moment around somewhere and maybe find one of these forces. But we have four forces, and we can only do three equations with this. So we're going to need to maybe do some shenanigans to figure it out. But the first thing we can do, right, is we can take a moment and we can find two of the forces. So if we take a moment at C, it's going to get rid of these two, and then we know that A of Y is not going to cause a moment. So A of X is going to be the only unknown force left. So we could do that at C or at A. So let's go ahead and do it at A to find C of X. Okay, so this marker's dead, so I'm going to use a different marker. So the sum of the moments around A, we know it's going to be equal to zero because our system is at equilibrium. I mean, we're doing statics, right? So let's, let's add it up, right? So if we're doing the sum of moments around A, these two forces are gone. C of Y is pushing up, so C of Y is not going to have any moment around A. So it's going to be C of X. So C of X is pushing to the right. That's going to make us want to rotate counterclockwise, so that's going to be a positive. So we're going to add C of X, and then its distance in the Y direction is 3 meters, right? Because its radius is 3. So then what else is affecting this system, right? Well, we have this distributed force, right? So this distributed force is going to want to push us clockwise, so we're going to have to subtract that. So to use this distributed force, we're going to need to convert it into one force and one distance. So it's a uniform distributed, so its center is going to be at halfway, which is going to be 1.5 meters. And then we know it's 200 newton meters. So we're going to subtract the 200 newton meters, but then we have to multiply it by how many meters it acts on. So it acts for three meters. There you go. So these meters cancel out. So now we just know that it's 200 times three is the total force of this. And then we need to subtract, or we need to add, multiply by the distance to the center, which is again 1.5. So there we go. So this is our equation here. So if you go ahead and solve this, uh, you're going to get that C of X, right? You're going to move one of these over and divide by three. You're going to get that. I'm going to write it up here. C of X is equal to 300 pounds. And you get a positive number, so that means that we made the correct assumption that C of X points to the right. So let's go ahead and put a right arrow there. Nice. So that's part A. Uh, yeah, I'll erase it. Or that's one of them, right? So then we can do our next one. So then we know one of the forces in the X direction, so we can go ahead and just do some of the forces in the X direction. Set it equal to zero because we're at equilibrium, right? So we have A of X is that way, and then plus C of X. And that's it, right? So we're going to move one of them over. We're solving for A of X is equal to negative C of X. So that means that A of X is equal to 300 pounds, but to the left, right? That means that we went ahead and drew this force body diagram wrong. We assumed that A of X is pointing to the right. It's actually pointing to the left. So we're going to label it 300 pounds. But this time it's going to the left. So maybe if you're inputting it into a, like a computer, maybe say negative 300, however you want to denote that. Okay, so now we're left with the problem, right? We have two unknowns in the y direction, and we can't take a moment around anywhere to cancel them out. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to basically take a section of this and then simplify it to that. So I think the easiest section we can take is just going to be this segment AB. So we're going to take AB and convert that to just one thing. So let's, uh, let's redraw that. So we're going to have AB here. So this is B. This is A. Right? We have our A of X, which points 300 pounds to the left, and then or 300 newtons. Why am I using pounds? It's in newtons. That's funny. That's OK. Newtons, newtons. OK. Forget about that. So then we have A of X. We have A of Y. And then we have our distributed load. right? You know, goes down like that. Boom, it's all the way over. And then now we're gonna have one extra force. So the force is gonna be due to these forces onto our beam here, right? So we know that this force acts here, but this, these forces can kind of get carried up to B because whatever is happening here 
it's going to be pushing on the A beam at that point too. So we know we're going to have, uh, oh, these markers are really bad today. We know we're going to have, right, C of Y and C of X here. And those are going to be the same. So now we convert it over to this drawing here. So this drawing is a lot easier than that drawing because it's a straight line. And the easiest thing we can do now is to take a moment. So what are we going to do? Well, let's take the moment around C. So if we take the moment around C, or the sum of the moments around C, set it equal to zero because we're at equilibrium, then these forces are gone and we just have this unknown left. Right? So it's three meters long, and this is 200 newton meters. So that's one thing we can do. So let's go ahead and do it. So these are gone. So A of X is acting uh, you know, parallel or whatever, so it's going to have no moment. So this just going to be A of Y. So A of Y makes this one rotate counterclockwise, or clockwise. So we're going to subtract A of Y and multiply it by our distance. Then this 200 newton meter uh, distributed force is pushing down, making us want to rotate counterclockwise. So we're going to add that. So like we did on the last one, we're going to take the 200 newton meters, multiply it by the three meters to so get the total force, and then multiply it by how where its center is, which is going to be half of that 3.5. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and move the A of Y over and solve for this. You get A of Y is equal to 300 newtons. And it's pointing upward because we get a positive number here. So there we go. That's how we solved that one. So then all we have left to do is some of the forces in the Y direction. You know it's equal to zero. It's right equal to gram, so let's add them up. So we got A of Y. Now we got this minus 200 newton meter force acting over the three meters and then plus C of Y. So move C of Y over. And it's going to be minus A of Y, so we know A of Y is 300, and then we're going to add this 200 times 3. Right. So then we're going to get that C of Y is also equal to 300 newtons upward. And there we go, so there we go, that's how we figured it out. Uh, it's not too tricky, right? It's just about making sure you know where to take the right parts at, and making sure you know how to do these equations, which we've been doing for a long time now. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to check out my channel. i got a whole lot of statics videos. i got a playlist. Check that out. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.